31st lecture on response of linear systems to random inputs. <coughs> we shall confine to LTI, LTI systems and systems which are BIBO, that is bounded input, bounded output, stable. What does this mean? This means that H T mod D T minus infinity to plus infinity shall be shall be what? Finite, less than infinity. This is the kind of systems that we talk about in our discussion on response of linear systems to random inputs. So you have a random input X of T. The system is described by an impulse response H of T and you are interested in the in Y of T. Naturally, naturally since X of T is random, since X of T is random, X of T has only probabilistic or statistical descriptions, it has nothing else and therefore it is reasonable to expect that Y of T shall also have only probabilistic and or mm -hmm. statistical descriptions and therefore what we shall do is, what we shall do is to, to characterize Y of T given these characteristics of X of T and given H of T. This is our purpose of discussion and in the process naturally um, X of T shall be described by its mean value, by its mean squared value, it could be described by its autocorrelation function, it could be described by its spectral density, all right. <coughs> and Y of T shall also have the same kind of description except for the fact that we might want to correlate Y and X and therefore two other co correlation coefficients, cross correlation coefficients R X Y and R Y X shall be of interest and also the corresponding spectral density that is the Fourier transforms of the cross spectral density. This is what we wish to establish and uh, as we have done in the past we always start with the time <coughs> domain then go to the frequency domain. So let us start first uh, our consideration about the time domain. Now you know that in the time domain given a system with an impulse response of H of T in the time domain uh, the output is the uh, convolution of convolution of input and uh, the imp unit impulse response. So it is of the form X T minus lambda H lambda D lambda. We could also have taken the other equivalent form that is minus infinity to infinity X of lambda H of T minus lambda D lambda. Well I find it a little more convenient to use this form in the context of random signal. So we shall we shall stick to this. Suppose we want to find out, we want to find out the mean value of the output process. Mean value is naturally the expectation of this quantity and the expectation operator and the integration operator can be interchanged and therefore it is simply minus infinity to infinity E of X of T minus lambda H lambda D lambda and if the process is stationary then this is equal to is that required stationary process stationarity of process what I am going to do is to equate this to X bar is that required for stationary it is required okay. so this for a stationary random process therefore Y bar equal to X bar multiplied by an integral minus infinity to infinity H lambda D lambda now you recall that <coughs> that if we had multiplied the integrand by e to the minus st, then what would have this become? This would have become capital H of s. That is the system function or the transfer so function. E to the minus s lambda. 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 Okay. If we had multiplied this by e to the minus s lambda then this would have become h of s and since e to the minus s lambda is not there, the way to get rid of this is to put s equal to 0, then it becomes unity and therefore we prove that y bar equals to x bar multiplied by h of 0, alright. 
h of 0, that is the system function evaluated at dc, s equal to 0 corresponds to direct current or direct voltage and therefore the frequency is 0. And in that sense, h of 0 therefore is the ratio of the mean value of y to the mean value of x. This mean is over an ensemble and therefore h of 0 is sometimes called the DC gain because y bar and x bar they are averages the ratio of the two averages is the DC gain slightly loose terminology but the terminology has gone because one uh, DC gain means it refers to frequency whereas this the averages are over ensemble they may <coughs> or may not be equal to time averages all right so, <coughs> um, we proved that the output random process has a mean value which is equal to input random process multiplied by h of 0. As an example, suppose we have a simple RC network, okay, then what is h of s for this? 1 by s c r plus 1 very easy to show, which I can write as 1 over CR divided by S plus 1 over CR. I am putting the whole in evidence <coughs> and if I if I put 1 by CR, if I use a symbol, this is equal to B, small b, then H of S is equal to B divided by S plus B and naturally H of 0 is equal to 1, which is also obvious from the circuit. At DC, the uh, response is equal to 1 <coughs> and therefore for this circuit, Y bar equal to X bar. That is the output mean value is equal to the input mean value. You can, <coughs> you can do this, you can verify this in the time domain. <coughs> what is H of T for this? H of T is equal to 1 by is equal to b by b s plus b and therefore h of t shall be b e to the power minus b t times u t that's correct <coughs> and if you substitute this in the in the integral that is minus <coughs> infinity to infinity h lambda d lambda you shall precisely get this equal to x bar you can verify this by putting in the integral formula also <coughs> <coughs> Suppose you want to find out the mean squared value. <coughs> we shall write this as the expected value of yt multiplied by yt. All right, a trivial <coughs> manipulation, but we shall write this yt is twice. That is, we will write this as minus infinity to infinity x of t minus lambda 1, <coughs> we shall use two variables h of lambda 1, d lambda 1, and I will multiply this by minus infinity to infinity x of t minus lambda 2, h of lambda 2, d lambda 2. All right. You can ask me why I am doing this. I am going to find out in terms of the autocorrelation function. If we had used lambda 1 and lambda 2 is the same, well it does not bring the autocorrelation function into evidence. Now what I do is I play the usual trick that is <coughs> I interchange the expectation and the integration operators. There are two integrals here and therefore I have to be careful. I integrate last with respect to lambda 1 and first with respect to lambda 2 and I take the expectation operator inside that is e of x t minus lambda 1 <coughs> x t minus lambda 2 multiplied by h lambda 1 h lambda 2 d lambda 2 is that okay have I missed anything no <coughs> now you notice that this is simply this is simply the autocorrelation function that is r x of Rx of or, or lambda 2 minus lambda 1 because the uh, autocorrelation function is an even function. 
and therefore I can write this relationship as y squared bar is equal to minus infinity to infinity d lambda 1 minus infinity to infinity rx lambda 2 minus lambda 1 h lambda 1 h lambda 2 2 d lambda 2. This is the general relationship between the mean squared value and the autocorrelation function rx lambda 2 minus lambda 1. You must understand that y and x are two different processes. What we are doing therefore is to express the mean squared value of one process in terms of the autocorrelation function of the other process. The other process is undergoing a transformation in the LTI system which is reflected in the product h lambda 1, h lambda 2. So, it is, uh, <coughs> it, it cannot be simplified further unfortunately except for very special cases. Let us look at the special cases. Suppose the input process is white noise. If it is white noise, then what is Rx of, well white noise means Sx omega, the spectral density is equal to a constant, let us say S naught. And therefore, Rx of tau, the autocorrelation function is simply a delta function, S naught delta tau. All right. If I substitute this here, then you can see that y squared bar equal to minus infinity to infinity d lambda 1 s naught I can take out, then minus infinity to infinity delta lambda 2 minus lambda 1 h lambda 1 h lambda 2 d lambda 2. This integral exists only for lambda 2, lambda 2 is the variable only for lambda 2 equal to lambda 1 and under that condition the integral of delta lambda 2 minus lambda 1 uh, <coughs> d lambda 2 shall be equal to unity and therefore if we carry this out if we recognize this fact the property basic property of the unit impulse function then we find that y squared bar equal to s naught minus infinity to infinity d lambda 1 then what shall we have? H, h, lambda, h, lambda, h lambda, lambda 1 and h lambda, h lambda 1 because lambda 2 is equal to lambda 1 and therefore this is S naught integral minus infinity to infinity h lambda whole squared d lambda. Now we can get rid of the subscript 1 which means that the output mean squared value is equal to the <coughs> input spectral density which just only in the case of white noise, no, 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 in no other case, multiplied by, this is simply the area under the H T versus T curve. So, H T whole square. Pardon me? H T whole square, that is, square of the impulse response, okay. As an example, let us take the usual R C network. <coughs> Let us take the RC network once again. This is XT, this is YT. We are not showing a plus minus, why not? In the uh, drawing of a circuit with uh, excitation, we always show the direction of the current and the uh, polarity of the voltage. Why are not you showing this? Because they are? What? Random processes, all right. <coughs> they are random processes. All right. <coughs> Pardon me? So, still we have to take a, a particular direction to <coughs> the standard. No, we do not. That is why you work in terms of, uh, it is not important because we will always take averages and therefore the polarity is not important. And we shall always work in terms of H of S, which does not require a polarity. All right. It does not require, it is a transfer function. So, H of t here is B e to the minus B t u t and therefore, if X of t has a spectral density equal to S naught, that is if the input is a white noise process, then the output mean squared value shall be S naught integral B squared e to the minus 2 B lambda D lambda 
and the integral limits shall be from 0 to infinity, 0 because there is a multiplication by u of t. And if you carry out this integral, the result is b s naught divided by 2, all right. Now, <coughs> we want to interpret this result that is mean squared value is equal to b s naught by 2 in terms of one more fundamental quantity which is the bandwidth of the system. This system, this circuit R and C, <coughs> the half power bandwidth that is the 3 dB bandwidth is simply 1 over, yes, what is the bandwidth? At what frequency will the, will the voltage at the output be 1 by root 2 times the voltage at the input? What frequency? Isn't it obvious? B by S plus B. So, for sinusoidal excitation, B by B plus J omega. When shall it be B by root 2 magnitude? B plus J omega equal to B. Omega, omega equal to B. As simple as that. <coughs> All right. And for me, this will happen at omega equal to B. And therefore, the bandwidth of the system, bandwidth is defined as this. This is the DC response, let us say B, DC response is 1 and this is 1 by root 2. This is the bandwidth and bandwidth usually is expressed in hertz, all right. So, it is in hertz. What is the bandwidth then? 1 by 2 pi RC, hertz, okay. This is the bandwidth. And we have proved that our y squared bar is equal to b s naught divided by 2. Sir, omega is equal to b, the value is 1 by omega root 2. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> that is correct, 1 by root 2, not b by root 2. All right, I stand corrected. Now, I want to interpret this result in terms of bandwidth. You notice that capital B, the bandwidth can be written as B by 2 pi. So, is not this equal to B by 2 is pi times B times S naught, pi B S naught. It is a result of fundamental importance, although illustrated with the help of a very simple example. Most of the communication channels in practice a low pass system, a low pass systems and most of the communication channels qualitatively at least follow the same pattern as the simple RC network. The ionosphere for example or the stratosphere or uh, duct propagation, microwave, they are all low pass systems that is there is an upper cut of frequency. Now <coughs> what it shows is that the mean squared value of the output process is proportional to the bandwidth proportional to the bandwidth and this is why if you make a wide band system you also get prepared to accept wide band noise all right the output process the output mean squared value is proportional to the bandwidth and therefore the signal to noise ratio becomes extremely important and this is the this is why narrow band systems are employed wide band systems are very costly this is a general principle uh, uh, useful in all, almost all communication systems. Uh, Let us look at, <coughs> we have looked at the output mean value, the output mean squared value and if you know the mean squared value and the mean value, you can of course find sigma y squared which is equal to y squared bar minus y bar squared. Let us look at next the autocorrelation function that is R y of tau, the third statistical description of the output process. Well, by definition this is the expected value of y t and let us say y t plus tau. We can go through the same steps as we did for finding the y squared bar and I will simply uh, indicate how this is done. We write y of t as minus infinity to infinity <coughs> x of t minus lambda 1 
H lambda 1 d lambda 1 and we write y t plus lambda as minus infinity to infinity <coughs> x of t plus tau minus lambda 2 h lambda 2 d lambda 2 and we do the same trick that is we first write I will not repeat these steps we first write integral with respect to lambda 1 d lambda 1 and then integral with respect to lambda 2 take the expectation operation inside that is expectation of x t minus lambda 1 times x t plus tau minus lambda 2 which shall give me an autocorrelation of the input function autocorrelation of x then you have h lambda 1 h lambda 2 d lambda 2 if you do this then the ultimate value I skip the algebra the uh, final value I get is r y tau equals to once again it cannot be simplified further d lambda 1 minus infinity to infinity r x lambda 2 minus lambda 1 minus tau h lambda 1 h lambda 2 d lambda 2 this is the final result all right this is r y tau now you also know we also know the relationship between the mean squared value and the autocorrelation function. We know that uh, if our derivation has been correct, then putting tau equal to 0, I should get y squared bar. Do not you see that this is indeed true? If I recall what was my y squared bar, it y squared bar was oh I beg your pardon this is the <coughs> this is the relationship y squared bar was integral d lambda 1 rx lambda 2 minus lambda 1 h lambda 1 lambda 2 no this sign is not there multiplied by d lambda 2 and this is precisely what we have got here if you put tau equal to 0 this is precisely y squared bar and therefore my derivation is correct it should have it should not be different <coughs> and unfortunately this relationship cannot be simplified further unless you know a specific shape or specific value of the autocorrelation function. Suppose the input is a white noise process that is suppose Sx omega is equal to S0. You see the, you see the importance of white noise now. White noise is a concept, is a, is a hypothetical quantity like uh, Superman. Uh, but but it is useful, it is useful. Superman is our uh, topmost. I mean, we can compare the genre with Superman, uh, and you know how <laughs> how much distance is there. Similarly, white noise, we shall always judge what the deviation from white noise is, but white noise is a very convenient quantity to judge the uh, process, the autocorrelation or the cross correlation, and so on. Now, if Sx omega is S0, then Rx tau is equal to S naught delta tau and if you substitute this here and utilize the property of the delta function then I can again skip the algebra and we can show that R y tau is equal to S naught it is very easy minus infinity to infinity what shall I get? we shall get h lambda 1, h lambda 1 shall be there, instead of lambda 2 we shall have lambda 1 plus tau. Lambda one plus tau. Now this is an extremely interesting relationship. What does it show? What is this quantity? It is a convolution? No, it is not a convolution. In the time domain, it is not in the ensemble. It's not the correlation is not collect is not calculated about the answer. It is the time average of h lambda one and h lambda one plus. Two. In other words, this shall be proportional to r h of tau. Is that clear? This is a very interesting relationship that ensemble average of the output process, the autocorrelation, is proportional to the 
time autocorrelation of the of the uh, function h of t. The, uh, yeah. When you say time average, you take it from minus t to plus t and you divide by 2t and take the limit. Yeah. So, so I have not taken the taken that uh, limit. All right. You replace this by capital T and uh, minus capital T and plus capital but T. But still, there is a 2t term. <laughs> I know. It's proportional. That's why I said it's proportional. I can divide by 2t. H lambda, after all, I mean, if I integrate this, it will, it will be a finite quantity. It will be a finite quantity. I divide by 2 infinity, then the result is 0. That's a different thing. But suppose H lambda is a finite quantity, is a, it exists over a finite interval, which I can take. What is H lambda? It is b e to the minus b lambda u lambda. All right. So, it falls exponentially and I cut it off at some place. Then I take the average. All right. The, the result will be slightly inaccurate, but if I take this sufficiently large, it will be sufficiently accurate for practical purposes. All right. The important point is that it is R y tau is qualitatively at least proportional to a time average, which is surprising. Okay, it's a surprising result and uh, <coughs> an interesting result too. Once again, if I take the simple R C network, once again, in which h lambda is equal to b e to the minus b lambda u lambda, then and the input process is white, then r y tau, r y tau is equal to s naught. Now, instead of minus infinity to plus infinity, we shall have zero, zero to infinity, h lambda 1, so it would be b square e to the minus b lambda 1 e to the minus b lambda 1 plus tau d lambda 1. And if you clear the algebra, if you if you simplify this, you simply get b s naught divided by 2 e to the minus b tau, where obviously we have assumed that tau, tau is, have we assumed tau? We have not. Hmm? Tau need not be positive. Okay, but this is this result true for tau positive as well as negative? Yes, sir. <coughs> it cannot be. <laughs> there is a contradiction. Because if tau if tau tends to infinity, the autocorrelation should be zero. It's an exponential process after all. And therefore So sir B is positive, it will be zero. B is positive. So it is tend to No, but for tau minus infinity. So no. I will, but I am trying to justify. He says b is positive, okay, b greater than 0. If tau is minus infinity, then this is e to the power b infinity, which goes to infinity. This is not possible, and therefore this, this is true for tau greater than 0. If you put any tau, then obviously the modification, all the modification that you need is minus b tau. This is the correct result. This is the correct result. Now, <coughs> It doesn't come directly from the derivations of modulus. It does. Sir, how do you take 0 to infinity over there? It is 0 to tau. Because there are ut 2 times ut functions. Yes, it will be a great function. <laughs> Alright, let's go back. H lambda is equal to b e to the minus b lambda u lambda. Alright, and r y tau is equal to s naught. We will put the integral limits later s naught b squared e to the minus b lambda 1 u lambda 1 all right then e to the minus b lambda 1 plus tau plus tau plus tau u of lambda 1 plus tau u of now do you understand why tau cannot be negative yes, sir. So it can, so be, it negative. can be negative now we'll get it can be negative but you have to change the now integral limit Okay. Now we are zero to infinity. Right. Ah, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. No, but we have to go from go from minus tau to infinity, where we have assumed that tau 
is greater than zero. Anyway, you can clear this mess. What I have shown is that R y tau for the simple RC network is B s naught by 2 e to the minus B mod tau. <coughs> Now let's be a little bit more realistic. Let's modify input to be not quite white noise. Let's say we have the same network R and C. We have the same network R and C, but the input process S x omega, S x omega is not equal to S naught, but it is of the form. It is a low pass form. In other words, it is maximum value at DC and then it goes down. Well, what is the autocorrelation function for such a process? If I have something like this, Sx of omega, which goes down on both sides, well, the, one of the autocorrelation functions is of the form beta S naught by 2. I have chosen the constant intentionally, e to the minus beta tau. If this is the autocorrelation, then the spectral density is given by beta squared S naught. We have already done this example, okay, in spectral density. Beta squared S naught by omega squared plus beta squared. Let us suppose that the input noise process is not white. It has an auto, the input noise process has an autocorrelation function like this, whose spectral density is like this. And you notice that when omega tends to 0, what does S x omega tend to? It tends to S naught. And therefore, as far as low frequencies are concerned, if we confine ourselves to a low frequency band, obviously, the, the process is approximately white. But you can define a bandwidth. You can define that it is approximately a, a, a white noise process from 0 to some frequency. That frequency, wh how will you determine this frequency? If you if we if we stick to half power definition, then it will be from omega equal to zero to that frequency where the value becomes and by root, and by root one, by one by root two or something else. Spectral density. What is the unit of spectral density? Power per unit half, and therefore power shall be half, and therefore the bandwidth. If you are at all defining a bandwidth. It shall be from DC to a value of frequency at which Sx omega becomes exactly equal to half, not half, S not by two. This is the true half power frequency. And I wanted to bring this out because it is not 1 by root 2. You must understand that this has the dimensions of volt squared or ampere squared and therefore it shall be half. Now what we establish is that at low frequencies the input process is approximately white. Well, if it is so, then what is the output process? If I, if I substitute this in the expression, what was my expression? D lambda 1, you have to tell me the limits. Rx lambda 2 minus lambda 1 minus tau, H lambda 1, well in general my limits were minus infinity to infinity, minus infinity to infinity then h lambda 2 d lambda 2. This was my general formula. All right. Now, in this particular case, <coughs> we have to integrate this quantity r x multiplied by h lambda 1 h lambda 2. Now, r x of tau is like this. This is Rx of tau and this is tau. This is tau equal to 0. What would be Rx of lambda 2 minus lambda 1 minus tau? Obviously, it would be shifted to the right. Suppose I plot, I plot Rx of lambda 2 minus lambda 1 minus tau. What shall I plot it versus? What, what is, is it? What is it of interest? 
my integral variable, integration <coughs> variable is lambda 2. And therefore, I should plot this versus lambda 2. If I plot versus lambda 2, obviously the maximum shall be shifted either to the right or to the left depending on depending on the values lambda 1 plus <coughs> tau. So, if lambda 1 plus tau is positive, then it would be something like this. Okay, this shall be lambda 1 plus tau. Is the point clear? The maximum shall occur at lambda 1 plus tau when the argument is 0. All right, and therefore the range of integration, what will be the range of integration now? If we go back here, what will be the range of integration now? You look at this, you look at this and look at this function. What is our network? Our network is a simple RC network whose impulse response exists only for t greater than or equal to 0 and therefore the lower limit of this shall become 0. The upper limit is still infinity and is the point clear? So, if tau is negative then the lower limit will We are considering tau is positive. Okay. Finally, I will move put a mod tau. I do not have to derive for tau positive as well as negative because R y tau is an even function, all right. This is something, some uh, saving, saving uh, grace for the complicated calculation, if you consider it complicated. Now, let us go back. You understand that this limit shall now be 0 to infinity because of h lambda 2, not because of anything else. And if it is 0 to lambda, 0 to infinity, obviously it shall have two ranges. One is 0 to lambda 1 plus tau and the other is lambda 1 plus tau to infinity, all right. So, this integral therefore can now be broken up into two parts that is r y tau shall be equal to 0 to infinity d lambda 1 multiplied by 0 to lambda 1 plus tau <coughs> whatever the integrand is plus 0 to infinity d lambda 2 then lambda 1 plus tau to infinity, okay. Whatever the integrand was is the same integral. Why did we have to divide into two parts? Because in the two ranges the function is different and therefore we must take care of that. Now, if you substitute this and clear the uh, algebra, then the uh, final result that you get which I want you to look at very carefully is b squared beta s naught divided by 2 b squared minus beta squared e to the minus beta tau minus beta by b e to the minus b tau. This is the final result that you get after doing, after carrying out the integration. Now, because r y tau is an even function, we take care of both positive and negative tau by taking a mod sign there. I want you to notice that if beta tends to infinity, well, what was your S x of omega, you recall, what was it? Beta square, beta square. Beta square S naught divided beta by omega square. square plus beta square. If beta tends to infinity, then what does S x omega tend to? S Obviously S naught, all right. It also tends to S naught as omega tends to 0, but let us suppose beta tends to infinity then S x omega that is the input noise process tends to white noise. If beta tends to infinity then what does this tend to? If beta tends to infinity? Zero. Well, this tends to 0. No, it does not. No. Because of this factor beta by b, it becomes b S naught divided by 2 beta tends to infinity. So, you can ignore b square minus 2 b squared then minus there is a beta here there is a beta here. So, these two betas cancel so, it becomes b s naught by 2 e to the minus b mod tau that is what it becomes. Now, is not this precisely the result that we had obtained in the first example when we had considered the R C network to be fed by a white noise process. The output autocorrelation was precisely this all right which means that it is not too bad an assumption white noise. It does give an idea of the autocorrelation. The other thing I want you to notice is what is beta tends to infinity in practice? 
obviously you cannot get white noise, you cannot get beta times to infinity, but it is always relative. When you say x is much greater than y in electronics, one is to, what does the ratio stand for? 2000. <laughs> one is to 100. Or you have not done analog circuits yet, analog electronic circuits, no? no? Oh. One is to 10 is good enough for us, all right, for electronics. 1 is to 10, x is to y equal to 1 is to 10, then you say x is much greater than y, all right? It works in practice. Here, what is the uh, approximation then for the input noise to behave like a white noise? What is the approximation? Obviously, beta, there shall be, there should be relationship between beta and, and the system function, system parameter. What is the system parameter? B, beta and B, and therefore beta much greater than B will make sure that the input behaves like a noise, behaves like a white noise, and the output autocorrelation function is this, that is B S naught by T. <coughs> you can put, you can arrange this function in such a form that beta much greater than B, you get R Y T, R Y tau of this form. I shall simply write the expression. You get B S naught by 2 e to the minus B tau, which is the SEF autocorrelation function for white noise. And then this is multiplied, this is modified by a term which tends to unity as beta becomes much greater than B. And this term is 1 minus B squared by beta squared multiplied by. 1 minus b by beta e to the minus beta minus b times mod tau. You can see from here that when beta becomes much greater than b, it is simply the white noise autocorrelation that you finally get. Um, this would be a good point to stop. Tomorrow, which is the last class, we shall consider cross correlation, that is correlation between, so we have done y bar, we have done y squared bar, we have done the autocorrelation r y tau, the only time domain quantity that remains is the cross correlation function, that is what we shall calculate and we shall have a glimpse at the frequency domain analysis.